Today's video will be a basic repair for a ZTE Trek 2. About 3 years have passed since I got this tablet and now the battery is starting to push out on the case and is creating a bulge on the back panel. Since I still use this tablet on a daily basis, I want to replace the battery and continue to get as much use out of it as possible. To see how I do this, stay tuned. I've had my ZTE Track 2 for about 3 years now and it's served me well. I've used it for my daily device, video editing, and currently it's my home computer and entertainment system connected to an LG 42 inch television and a Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad. Lately, I've noticed a bulge on the back of the tablet. Anyone who's even a little familiar with this symptom knows that this can only mean one thing, failing battery. Knowing this tablet could still serve a good purpose for many more years, I want to see what I can do to get my Trek 2 back into a safe working condition. So let's get started. The first thing I need to do is open it up. I've yet to open up a tablet that's been glued together, so this will be my first. I don't have a heat gun, so my DIY theory of how to do this is as follows. Based on my last video, I felt the use of an iron was a lot better at directing high heat in just the right area to soften the glue holding the device together, so that's what I'm going to use. The first thing I'm going to do is see if I can get a paint scraper jammed into the corner of the ZTE. If the substances to either side of the scraper were glass, I wouldn't be doing this, but because it's rubber on one side and metal frame on the other, I think I should be okay. I'm just going to give a tap enough to get the scraper edge to crack open the corner but not penetrate any further. At this point, I have to bring up the fact that as I'm doing this video, I'm also doing my previous video which included using the iron to melt the glue holding the tablet together. What I didn't know at the time was the ZTE Trek 2 tablet is not glued together. So this video continues as usual but without the need for any heating element. To be clear, there is no glue holding the tablet together, so a quick tap of the paint scraper, then some picks should separate the two halves. I realized the tablet wasn't glued together as I got further in using the picks. As I stuck the picks into the slit in the side of the tablet, I could hear these popping noises like you hear when you pull the back cover off of a phone where the back cover snaps in place. There is a small screw under a sticker I found holding down the area near the SIM and SD slots. Once that's removed, the rear cover easily comes off. Removing the top and bottom plates gave me a little trouble, but I eventually figured it out. Once I removed the screws, the plate was still stuck, even with the picks. There's clips on either side of each plate that has to be pried off with a very thin screwdriver. One last thing I'd like to point out when removing these plates are prongs that stick out from the PCB, which I've circled in red. The prongs are very fragile and are contacts for electronics that run through the plates. Be careful of these since I'm not sure what will stop working if these break off. Follow the flex cable from the battery to where it connects to the PCB and pry the connector up with your fingernail. For removing the battery, I felt pretty comfortable using lacquer thinner now that I know how it works based on my previous video. Carefully use a thin sheet of metal to irrigate lacquer thinner under the battery, then use the sheet metal to slowly cut through the adhesive holding the battery in place. At this point, I can install the new battery, but for those who wanted to see this tablet disassembled down to its last screw, the rest of this video is for you. I won't go into detail for the rest of this disassembly. It's meant for informational purposes and could be useful for someone who maybe wants to replace a cracked screen on a Trek 2. At this point, there is nothing else I could easily dismantle, so this is as far as I'll go. I have seen photos of the LCD and touchscreen, 
and from what I can tell by the connectors in the photos, the single connector at the top left is for the touch screen. The connector on the left of the pair of connectors is for the LCD. If I'm wrong, the connectors I mention versus the part therefore might be reversed. I could not figure out how to continue the teardown from this side, but if my screen were cracked and I had a replacement, this is where I'd use heat on the opposite side where the screen is. It might be a risk, but there's no other way I could see doing this. In this close-up, there are two other items here you should be aware of. The first is a cable that connects to the motherboard. Be cautious of this one, it seems to be glued in place to the motherboard connector, and with that, I can't remove the motherboard. I have to leave it dangling. Second is the black rubber part. If you get this far with the teardown, this piece will fall out. I think it's sticking to the motherboard as you flip it over. This photo should help you put it back in its proper orientation. I had to disassemble the motherboard once more to check if I really couldn't get to the screen and this time I confirmed I couldn't. I'll time lapse the rest of this assembly up until the battery installation. And finally, the reason for this video, installing a new battery. My two-sided tape is still on order, so I'm going to glue the battery in using goop. Tiny specks here and there should be enough. Also, I forgot to leave the battery connector exposed, so I had to remove one of the plates to get to the connector. This project didn't go quite the direction I thought it would, but in the end, I still got the result I was hoping for. I'll probably factory reset this tablet and wait till I have a need for a 7 inch device. I hope this video is helpful to you. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.